Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today I will be starting sort of not a new series, but a new set of videos on my channel, and that will be um, the unboxing, the build, and flights, and review of the ZMR X210, and now I purchased this kit off of FPVmodel.com. I purchased it with my own money. Um, I believe it was about $250, and it basically includes everything um, to get you in the air. Um, uh, sort of a high-end build, not it's it's like a media a high medium end. Um, with some new, definitely the new Emacs motors that are really good. Um, um, all you need is your receiver and your battery and your radio. Um, and now this is how it came. Um, it came obviously in a little FedEx bag, but it was just all the parts were just wrapped up like that in the uh, bubble wrap there. So let me actually push it over here and might as well start with, uh, let me set it. Some of the stuff on the floor here, so you can get a better look at what all came in the package here that I bought. So first is this little bag here, and it's got some. Let's see what they're. They're little plastic, I think. Well, no, they are metal. Um, little metal screws and washers down here, probably for the camera mount. Looks like we have several small zip ties, a couple larger ones. Um, we do have some heat shrink, small and large. And one thing that's really nice that I didn't even know came in it is this um, tube shrink. Or it's like um, a nylon cord. A lot of people put it over their ESCs. Um, it tidies them up and it looks really cool. And they included a uh, piece here that you can cut using your ESC. So that's really awesome. I did not know that came in there. Um, so here we have a box. It says Fox Sear. It's probably the camera. Now it's supposed, it's supposed to come with, there's different versions, and I'm supposed to get the HS1177 camera. So let's take a look here. And there are several versions you can get it without FPV equipment. So here's the camera, and it does indeed look like the correct one. So hopefully this should be a big upgrade from my other FPV cameras. Um, I've just had really cheap ones up to this point, so I'll get to see what a real camera performs like. Um, and here's a little mounting bracket that what you, uh, I believe, I don't believe you use this on the frame, has its own mounting. Um, a little connector here, it also comes in the box, and then this little uh, sort of programming tool, it's got a little joystick thing. I'm not sure if I'll be using that. And then a little manual to help you set it up. But we'll go through that right now. So let's set that aside. Next is the props. And now these props are 5 inch 50 45 bullnose tri blade props. And now originally it's supposed to come with um, black ones. However, I requested on my order black and green, but they emailed me, said they were out of black. So I said just send all green, which you can see they did here. And they, I believe they're DAL. I'm not sure if they're branded directly, but they definitely do feel and look like DAL, DAL props. So should get tons and tons of power out of these on the 210 frame. Um, let's look here. This looks to be, let's see, uh, the flight controller. So let's cut this out. And now this is, um, I usually prefer like a NAS32, but this is their own um, brand, X Racer F303, um, sort of FPV models flight controller. Um, it's supposed to have the F3 processor in there, just like the SP3 board, so it should be really good. And it runs clean flight. Oh, there's a bag in a bag. At least I can rip this one, so it should be just as good as any of the other boards. Um, so it comes with two long rows of straight pins right here. I'm not sure if I like that as much as the ones that are pre-made, but this definitely gives you a lot more custom, um, customizable options setting up your pins. And you have a little male-to-male -male, um, servo connector, three wire here, probably from your board to your receiver, something like that. And then here you have your board, and as you can see, there's a lot of pin outputs, lots of stuff going on here. Let me if I probably move that. I can probably, nah, that didn't make it any better. Um, but you can see it looks pretty similar to something like a Naze 32. Um, stuff on the back, X Racer. I don't believe it has a barometer. Uh, let me see. No, it does not have the barometer on it. But um, you know, I'll see how that goes. It's clean flight, so should be a pretty good board. And here we have our antenna for the FPV. I don't think I'll be using this antenna just because um, I've got some 
um, Aonway and uh, Fat Sharks Bureau Net antenna, so this probably won't stack up against it. But I will indeed test it because who knows, sometimes you get a really good Chinese, um, the cheap antennas sometimes work out really well. Um, but the um, cable here is very nice. It's a really nice stiffness to it. Um, holds its shape very well, and I like how short it is. That should save a little weight. So let's put that aside there. And uh, one of the other things here is the motors. And if you can tell here, these are the Emacs. Uh, what are they? RS2205, and these are the 2300 kV editions, not the 2600 kVs. And it comes with four of these, obviously. So let's just open and go through one. Uh, very nice packaging here. Sort of a thing like you'd see on a DVD little case. And then, let's see how this goes. Okay, that pops open. And there's a little foam thing covering the motor and everything inside. You can see it's packaged there. There's actually a Allen wrench included in a, in the motors. That's is it in every one? Yeah, there's one in every one. That's cool. Um, and it's sort of actually like a brown reddish color. I don't know if you're able to see that on camera, but it's not just a black or a silver. Um, so it's interesting that they give you one per motor. So you can have a few spare Allen keys. It's pretty thick and it feels and looks pretty decent quality. So that's really nice. Um, here's a bag of screws, and it comes with five screws, not just four, so if you lose one, that's nice. They do look fairly long, though, so I'm not sure. Okay, here's some more screws. Um, here's four more, along with, um, these look even maybe a little longer, but these have three prop nuts in them. and has three um, of this, you know, the tighten down your props on three per motor. That's awesome, because I was running out of them. And lastly, your motor, you can see very nice little case. Definitely presentation points they get for that. So let's take a look at the motor here. Um, now as you can see, the Emacs says power to the world. Take a look at the bottom. Um, these are called the red bottom motors. And you can see they do look, they look very nice. Um, this is my first kind of real brushless motor, our first high quality one. Um, you can see the magnets, though, they definitely do look a lot bigger than some of my other motors. The magnets, um, that's where it's probably getting its more power from. And if you see that little blue stuff over here, that is um, stuff they put on there to balance the motor, to keep it vibration-free, which is great. Um, the windings in there, they do look like they could be a little better, but um, they are pretty clean. And the motor's um, nice silicon wires. It's got, a, I think, probably a 3 or 4 millimeter shaft. Um, let me spin it. No vibrations and no noises that shouldn't be there. And there is, yep, there's absolutely no play in the shaft, so that's awesome. And now these are the cooling motors, so you can see this um, little arrows here. Um, even though you can wire either way, it's meant to spin clockwise for the um, cooling to work better. And as you can see, it's the RS2205. So those motors look pretty awesome. Now lastly, Let's get to this box here, which is the ZMR X210. And I sure hope the other parts are in here because that's this is the only thing left. So hopefully they package it all in here. And yes, it does indeed look like they did. Um, so here we have this. This is pretty familiar to me and some some of the others maybe. This is a Matek PDB or Matek. Um, I got a couple of these from Banggood and Gearbest, so apparently they, they sell them too. It's pretty simple PDB, you know, it's decent. It's got um, outputs for everything, 5 and 12 volts, large a range of voltages and amp draws, so nice, simple, cheap PDB that works well. And there's also a little manual that came with it. Here we have, looks like the Dragonfly um, 200 milliwatt FPV transmitter. Now one thing that I definitely do like about this one, um, I saw that it was included, is it doesn't come on with the uh, connector straight on, um, like straight um, direct soldered to the thing. It has a little pigtail extension on it, which will give you a great amount of flexibility. So in a crash, because normally if it was on here, it'd just snap off. But because of this, it'll let it flex, and you're less, much less likely to break it. And it'll also give you a little more options for placing. Um, it's got uh, sort of stickers and um, heat shrink on it. Looks like it might have a little LED screen up here because it's kind of got an eight like numbers. And it shows you the outputs of the pins down here. It's nice. And there is a little, oh, there's an on-off switch directly on here. As well as a, uh, there's the on-off switch right there. Little focus right there. And then there's a little dip switch there. So it looks pretty nice. And it came with a simple um, camera uh, 
uh, power lead here for your video, unsoldered pins on the end. Now let's take a look, and here are the ESCs that I was kind of getting worried about. Um, and now these are little b 20 amp ESCs. These are the first little b ESCs I've ever had, and I can just say that these are crazy. I did not expect them to be, oops, no, um, to be this small, like. They don't look that small on camera. I never imagined them to be this small, but I guess the little B, um, the little <laughs> is definitely putting its mark in because these are definitely a lot smaller than even my 12 amp ESCs, the cheaper ones. So that's crazy. And hopefully, um, I was kind of concerned about these motors on 12 amp ESCs, but I asked around, and a lot of people, including BMS Web, told me that they run these 20 amps with these motors, and it works just fine, even though those can pull up to 30. Um, but these came with the kit, so I thought I'd go with them. And if I do lose one or two, I'll um, upgrade to the 30 amp ones. But they just look awesome. Just uh, everything looks great, nice and clean, really high quality it looks like. Um, and these are Opto ESCs, so there's no BEC inside of them, which is probably why they're a little smaller. And so as you can see, but I will get to all my power for the flight controller from the power distribution board because you're supposed to make a stack on this one. And you do get four of those. It would be nice to get five motors and uh, five ESCs, but obviously you're um, putting quite a bit more cost in there. Um, here we have some 3M Velcro, probably a, a foot about of each side, the hooks and loops. So that'll be, you know, maybe if you want to Velcro your battery down. Here's some double-sided sticky foam tape of 3M, not really sure, but uh, that's for, I'll get to that later. Here's some wire, and they might... Uh, I don't know if they intend you to put your, uh, they probably want you to put your battery, your battery plug cable off of this, but um, it is 16 gauge wire, and at the amount of amps this build is going to be drawn with these motors and the battery, I got a, I have a 4S 1300 45-90C Nanotech battery on the way. Uh, 16 gauge, I wouldn't say is going to be enough. I'll probably put 14 or maybe even 12 on that, but um, it is okay that they included it. Um, and here... Now we're just getting into a lot of little spare parts. I won't really go through these because, you know, these will come later. But just one thing real quick. This bag is kind of, looks like there's almost rust inside of it. Dirt, I don't know there. Looks pretty dirty. That's the only one that is, though. Um, here's some, a lot of more screws, more screws, pillars, spacers, more screws, more spacers, more screws. <sighs> Here is um, two battery straps. Let's Take a look. These are pretty simple ones, such as the Turnigy ones I have. They're FPV model branded. Um, it's nice to get a couple more. They work fairly well. And these do look uh, higher quality than the Turnigy ones I had. And they also, I just found this in here, they do include an XTC, or an XT60 plug, sorry, inside of there. So it'll let you solder up your battery cable. Or you can use a different one if you're using, your battery has a different connector. Uh, okay, so here we have rather interesting cable. It's three three wires with single pin connectors. Um, so I'm not really, I think this might have to go with your OSD if you add one. I'm not really sure. I'm not experienced in um, wiring and such with these single pin connectors. I've never used them. But um, yeah, I, I honestly don't know what that one's for too much. And lastly, inside this box is all of these frame pieces. So let me get that aside. And they are all definitely, um, want to note that they are all very nicely packed in this blue sort of heat shrink wrap to keep them from banging into each other and um, getting scratched. They're all in their separate little pouches, so no scratches can be induced from shipping or whatever. It'll all be your fault if you scratch it. So let me open one here. Okay, here we are, I have it out of the package. And let me look real quick, just for any uh, imperfection scratches on it. And I do see a couple on um, the sort of, they're not really scratches, if you can, I don't know if you can see that up there, right where the light is in the middle. They're, they're sort of, they're not scratches, but they, um, you know, it's not perfect carbon. And now it definitely is real carbon, you can see all the way through, it's not just a fake um, glass plastic infill. Um, and other than that, it's got a fairly matte finish. It's not really all that glossy. And let me look at all the holes closely, quick. 
Uh, yeah, I don't see really any burring even on a more complicated hole like this one up here. These sort of little dog bones ones. There's no burring, so the tools used were nice and sharp. And so that's nice, and I believe those are probably 1.5 millimeter plates. And now with this design, you can go with the sandwiched plate one, which will give you more strength and uh, the more typical build. But you want if you can if. Oh, tongue twister. If you want, you can use just one plate to save uh, whatever, how many, how much, how many grams one of these weighs. Because um, some people thought this um, was a little heavy. Um, and now this definitely is, I'm going to mention, uh, sort of a clone. It's not an exact clone, but it's pretty, pretty close to the um, Impulse RC, I think, the Alien 5 inch edition. So that's definitely something to note. Some, uh, I think Banggood now sells the Martian. That's their clone, but um, I think this one's definitely a lot more justice to it, a lot higher quality. It does cost quite a bit more. Now here we have these two little pieces. These make up the little camera mount. Now this is what I was interested to see on the site because they just kind of they kind of go into the frame like this, and then the camera screws into the side here, like that, and it allows you to tilt it up and down in the frame. Um, really up quite a bit, so that's awesome. Lots of angle choices there. Um, lastly, it's here's the uh, top plate. Let's get that out. So there we go. Like a, once again, nice carbon. This might only be look. Mm, I think it's 1.5 millimeters again. I'm um, pretty nice. This end here is where your battery cable and video transmitter come out. Everything looks nice. And let's take a. I'll look at one of the arms, because that's one of the more important things. Let's just take a close-up look at one of them. And now they're a fairly interesting design, although, once again, very similar of a clone or copy to the 5-inch um, Alien series, um, but obviously a lot cheaper. And the carbon twill on it, let me look, uh, looks pretty, pretty darn nice. It looks um, probably, obviously not serious, like ultra high quality standards but the twill definitely looks very clean once again no burring on the holes here um, right here might be a stress riser there's not all that much material there but these are indeed four millimeter thick arms so they do have quite a decent bit of carbon in there um, let's see actually on this side you see here where the arm or the it meets the circular part the twill gets a little bit more messed up there um, and it doesn't on this side, so that's just a little imperfection. And then you have your mounting holes for the arm back here, obviously. And now they do also sell, I saw on FEV model, they sell spare they sell, they sell spare parts for um, every part of this frame. I have a two spare arms coming as well as a uh, Mobius or run cam mount. So I'll be able to, there's a little carbon mount for that. I have them on the way. They're a couple bucks extra. And they do sell um, elongated arms. Um, I believe they're just a little bit longer, which allow you to run um, six inch props. So that's pretty nice that they allow that option. Um, but other than that, everything looks really awesome. Now this is an X frame design. Um, so basically you've got your frame, your motors, your ESC, your camera, your video transmitter, your antenna, your props, your board, um, your power distribution board, your flight controller. Basically everything you need here besides your, oops, I forgot one piece. I'll keep talking though, but besides your receiver, battery, and radio. So a pretty full and encompassing kit. And then this, I'm looking really forward to getting this thing in the air and testing out. I'll do full build videos for you guys. I'll probably break it up into a couple parts, um, but you can just see here, lots of parts here. This is going to be awesome, and I can't wait. Um, this is probably going to be my most fun build yet, and it should be extremely powerful with these motors and little BESCs compared to what I'm used to. Um, so that was the end of the unboxing video. Stay tuned for other videos coming up on this soon, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.